Hi there. In this video I want to discuss the discriminant analysis and I also want to show you how we can use this in order to sketch quadratic curves. Firstly, the discriminant analysis. So, uh, in order to check if a quadratic curve of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c where a, the coefficient of x squared is not equal to zero, crosses the x-axis, we need to calculate the discriminant delta, and delta, the formula for delta, is b squared minus 4ac. So we use the discriminant analysis mostly in order to check if the curve crosses the x-axis at two points, or at one point, or if the curve does not cross the x-axis at all. Now, consider three cases for delta. So remember, delta is the value of b squared minus 4ac. The first case is, if delta is greater than zero, your quadratic curve crosses the x-axis at two points. So I have a diagram here. So this quadratic curve crosses the x-axis at two points, as you can see. And the second case is, if delta is equal to zero, then the quadratic curve crosses the x-axis at one point. For repeated root, or if delta is equal to zero, you'll get a quadratic curve of this form. And the third and final case, if delta is less than zero, then the curve does not cross the x-axis. So you're going to have a quadratic curve of this form, okay, which does not cross the x-axis. Now, I have an example here. So let's see this in action with a quadratic curve sketch. So example one, sketch the following curves. On your sketch, clearly mark the coordinates of the turning point and any points where the curve crosses the coordinate axes. So in part A, y is equal to 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. Let me show you the solution. So we have this quadratic. The first step is to complete the square of the quadratic. So first step, complete the square. So here are the steps for when you complete the square. Now, once you get the answer for when you complete the square, you need to compare that above with a into x plus h squared plus k. And remember in the last video, we need the values of a, h and k in order to work out the coordinates of the turning point. So we notice by comparison, a is two, h is one, k is minus three. And in the last video, so in part two, I gave you a result to work out the coordinates of the turning point, and the result is minus h and k. So our h value, when we completed the square, is one. So the x-coordinate of the turning point is minus of the h-value, so it's minus 1. The k-value, when we completed the square, is minus 3. So the y-coordinate of the turning point is minus 3. So remember the coordinates of the turning point result, it's minus h and k. If you're not familiar with the concept, watch part 2 of the completed square video. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. So how about nature? So our a value is equal to two, two is greater than zero. So if a is greater than zero, the nature is a minimum. So nature means what kind of turning point we have. So we have a minimum point if a is greater than zero. And let's also remind ourselves of range. So it's not asked in this question, but if a is greater than zero, the range is y greater than or equal to the k value, and the k value is minus three. So all of that is step number one. Now in step number two, the discriminant analysis. So remember, to work out the discriminant, you need to work out delta, the value of b squared minus four ac. So our a, b, and c values from the quadratic were two, four, and minus one. So if I, subs I substitute them into delta, we'll have 24. So 24 is the value of delta, and it's plus 24. And remember, since delta is greater than zero, our curve, our quadratic curve, crosses the x-axis at two points. 
So if delta is greater than zero, let's calculate the coordinates of these two points. So to work out the coordinates where the curve crosses the x-axis. So remember, when the curve crosses the x-axis, the y-coordinate is zero. And if you put y equals zero into the quadratic curve, we're going to end up with this equation, 2x squared plus 4x minus 1 is equal to zero. Now, this is not factorizable, so you need to use the quadratic formula, and you should therefore get these two values of x being minus 1 plus or minus root 6 over 2. So hence, our curve crosses the x-axis at two points. So the two points have coordinates minus 1 plus root 6 over 2 and 0 and minus 1 minus root 6 over 2 and 0. So this justifies our discriminant analysis in the sense that we have two crossing points on the x-axis. For the sketch also, you need to work out where the curve crosses the y-axis. So when the curve crosses the y-axis, remember, x equals zero. So if you substitute x equals zero into our curve equation, we should get a y-value of minus one. Therefore, our curve crosses the y-axis at the point 0 for x and minus 1 for y. Now, if you put this together in step number 3, you should have a quadratic curve of this form. Okay, So this curve clearly shows the coordinates of the turning point, okay? which we had in step number 1. It clearly shows uh, approximately where the curve crosses the x-axis and also the y-axis. So this completes part uh, example one, part A of the curve sketch.